My name is Houston Harry, and today I'm going to talk about Wichita State football. Hopefully you have already read my feasibility analysis, and you have seen the plan that I have laid out for the reinstatement of Shocker football. In this short video, I will talk about two different universities, Kennesaw State University and Georgia State University, and how they have successfully went about reinstating their football programs and in the processes in which they used. Kennesaw State University reinstated the football program in 2009, and then the following year, they began construction on their brand new football stadium, and they also approved a $100 per semester student fee increase. In 2013, the Georgia Board of Regents approved a request to begin playing in the fall of 2015. They also announced the naming rights agreement for their new stadium and their practice complex. They hired their base coaching staff, consisting of legendary head coach Vance Dooley, as well as an offensive and defensive coordinator. Finally, they announced their affiliate membership with the Big South Conference. Then, in 2014, they announced the first signing class for Kennesaw State football. They also completed the hiring of the coaching and support staff, such as the trainers, equipment staff, and the rest of the football operations office. Late in 2014, they held open tryouts for current Kennesaw State students that were looking to join the football program. In 2015, they announced their second signing class, and then began their first season of play that fall. They played six home games and five away games. Kennesaw State currently plays their home games at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. It opened in 2010 with a capacity of 8,300 people. It also includes 12 luxury suites and 12 outdoor suite decks. The average attendance for their home football games over the past five seasons has, has been 8,820. They also built brand new football offices and an indoor practice facility, which totals in 29,500 square feet and includes 16 offices for the coaching staff and football operations managers. It also has 10 meeting and film rooms. They recently added a 4,300 square foot weight room to the facility. As you can see in the picture above, Fifth Third Bank Stadium is much smaller than Cessna Stadium, as its capacity is only about a quarter of that of Wichita State's home field. As you can see on the near side of the field, they have 10 tents that serve as outdoor suites, and they also have 10 luxury suites in the stadium. In the lower picture, you can see the rest of their athletic facilities, as well as their indoor practice facility and football offices. Most of the funding for the Kennesaw State football program comes from student fees. The $100 per semester raise in student fees generates between $4.8 and $5.4 million dollars dependent upon undergraduate enrollment. Fifth Third Bank also committed $5 million over the first 10 years of their contract. They have 10 suite rentals at $35,000 per year, which totals $350,000 per year. The Kennesaw State University Alumni Foundation also promised $200,000 per year. This plan has so far resulted in more than $3 million in reserve funds over the first five years. Next, I will be talking about Georgia State University and their journey from no football team to an FBS Division I football program. In 2007, they began their feasibility analysis into beginning a football program. They secured over $1 million in pledges from alumni and other community members. They also approved an increase in student fees. In 2008, they announced the addition of football at the FCS level that would begin play in the fall of 2010. They also hired their base coaching staff as well as held open tryouts for current Georgia State students. They then began construction on their brand new practice facility. In 2009, they announced their first signing class and also began practice. The following year, they announced their second recruiting class and then began play that fall. In 2012, after two years of playing at the FCS level, they accepted an invitation to join the Sunbelt Conference in 2013. And finally, in 2015, they announced that they had purchased Turner Field from the Atlanta Braves and they would redevelop it as a new football stadium. Georgia State currently plays all of their home games in the Georgia Dome, which has a capacity of just over 71,000 people. Last season, their average attendance was only 10,347. As you can see, the Georgia Dome is far too big to be hosting a football program playing in the Big South Conference. Their brand new practice facility features a full-length football field, as well as 22,000 square feet of offices, which include locker rooms, equipment rooms, a training room, meeting rooms, and football operations offices. They also just added a 7,000 square foot weight room and training facility. In 2015, as I mentioned earlier, they purchased Turner Field with plans to convert the stadium from baseball into a full-time football stadium for Georgia State University. As you can see here, Georgia State has no business playing their home games in the Georgia Dome as they cannot even fill out the lower level. Thus, I believe 
it is a good idea to move their official home games to Turner Field. As you can see here, these are the plans to renovate Turner Field and convert it from a full-time baseball stadium into a full-time football stadium by bringing in the right field wall and adding a new stadium concourse where right field used to be. Georgia State took a much different approach to funding than Kennesaw State did, as they proposed a $200 per semester increase in student fees. This increase would generate roughly $5.2 million to support starting the football program. For the current year, the athletic fee for students was $277 per semester. Last year, Georgia State received almost $739,000 in contributions. Georgia State also received over $2.8 million in licensing fees. Last year, Georgia State recorded football revenues of almost $29 million, and with expenses of $27.5 million, they only profited $1.5 million for a complete season. This concludes my slideshow, and hopefully these two examples help to visualize the process that Wichita State must take when reinstating their football program.